Hi friends, this is Emily from Hiking with MJO and today we are going to cover some very important tips for dealing with rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes are the largest venomous snakes and they live in North and South America. Rattlesnakes are found in almost every part of the continental United States. So unless you live in Alaska, chances are there's a rattlesnake species in your state. In addition to their rattles, all rattlesnakes share some common physical characteristics. Uh, that is a triangular shaped head, cat-like pupils, and foldable fangs. It is important to know the snakes and wildlife specific local to the area you plan to hike. In Arizona, where I live, the gopher snake has a similar pattern to a rattlesnake, but the tail comes to a point and has no rattle. This snake is harmless. Scientists have identified 36 rattlesnake species, 13 of which are present in Arizona. Arizona has the most rattlesnake species than any other state. The rattlesnakes most commonly seen in Arizona are the Mojave, black-tailed, and western diamondback species. In warm deserts, rattlesnakes are most active March through October. During the spring, they're going to be seen in the daylight hours. As the days become increasingly hot, usually around early May, rattlesnakes may become more active at night. Now, are they aggressive? Rattlesnakes don't want to bite us, but they will defend themselves if they feel threatened. Rattlesnakes may use their rattles as a warning, although they do not always rattle before biting. Whether coiled or stretched out, they can quickly strike one third or more of their body length from any position. Their venom is extremely potent. Rattlesnake species venom is composed mainly of hemotoxins. Symptoms of hemotoxins include temporary and or permanent tissue and muscle damage, loss of extremity depending on the location of the bite, internal bleeding, and extreme pain around the injection area. Some rattlesnake species have venom that contains neurotoxins. Neurotoxins act faster than hemotoxins and they attack the nervous system. So symptoms of a neurotoxic rattlesnake bite include problems with vision, difficulty swallowing and speaking, skeletal muscle weakness, difficulty breathing, and respiratory failure. Although this all sounds really scary, deaths from snake bites are extremely rare with proper treatment. Poisonous snakes don't always inject venom when they bite either. So according to Arizona Poison Centers, less than 1% of rattlesnake bites result in human deaths. So let's talk about prevention. If you're on the trail, you don't need to be worried as long as you keep your eyes open and don't put your hands and your feet where you can't see them. If you see a snake, don't go near it, just go around it. And if you do that, it's pretty hard to be bitten. Uh, most bites occur when people go into the brush. This was my experience when I was hiking in the spring a couple years ago. We went off trail to find our way to another connecting trail where we were walking over some boulders and we heard the distinct rattling sound. I assume the snake was in that crevice um, of the boulders we were walking over. So we hightailed it out of there very quickly and never actually saw the snake. Uh, definitely got our hearts racing. Um, so just remember, snakes have no ears. They can't hear you coming. And I am sure that snake was just as surprised as we were that day um, on the trail. So tips for hikers stay on trail. And if you see a snake, don't panic, don't throw rocks, just distance yourself from it. Um, you know, maybe you might have to go turn around, go another way. Um, warn others on the trail in, about a snake if you saw one. Um, be aware of those peak movement times, um, but pretty much if it's over 60 degrees, snakes might be out and about. So um, just because it's not those peak months or times of the day, they could still be out. Um, make sure you unplug your music or headphones or keep it very low so you can hear sounds um, from the trail while you're hiking. Um, if I had had headphones in that day, um, 
when I was hiking and the snake rattle was going off, I might not have heard it. Um, again, watch where you put your hands and feet. Try to keep them out of those crevices in the rocks, wood piles, any kind of deep gra grass, just keep them away. Um, if you are hiking after dark, carry a flashlight. And dead snakes can bite, so don't ever handle a venomous reptile even after it's dead. Those reflex strikes um, can occur for several hours after death. Now, if a rattlesnake bite does occur, try to remain calm and reassure the victim if maybe you're not the one that is a bit and call 911 and seek medical attention right away. This might be difficult if you are out hiking. You may have to get to somewhere where you would have a cell phone signal to make that call um, or send someone else to make that call. You will want to remove all jewelry and watches from the affected area because swelling is going to happen. And do your best to immobilize the extremity, stay still, um, keep it at the level below the heart and wash that bite with soap and water if possible. But if you are out again hiking, you might not have soap. Um, so just cover that bite with a clean, dry dressing. And if you do have a marker pen of some sort, you can mark the edge of the tenderness or swelling on the skin and write the time alongside it. And if you have the opportunity, take a photograph of the snake from a safe distance, if possible. Uh, that way, identifying the snake can help with the treatment of the snake bite with the appropriate antivenom. What not to do if a rattlesnake bite occurs? There is a lot of old thinking out there when it comes to snake bite first aid. Do not apply ice to the area, although you likely won't have any ice while hiking. Do not use an incision or tourniquet. Do not administer drugs or alcohol. Do not use electric shock treatment and do not try to suck out the venom. Do not buy or use snake bite kits. I remember hiking with these when I was a kid. Research strongly suggests these actually do more harm than good. These suction cups may actually force that venom even deeper into the tissues. This information isn't meant to scare anyone, but to empower you to be prepared while hiking. By leaving rattlesnakes alone and staying on trail, you can significantly reduce your risk of being bitten. In fact, 50 to 70% of reptile bites managed by the Arizona Poison and Drug Information Center were provoked by the person who was bitten. So don't bother them and they won't bother you. I hope you found this information helpful. I've linked my sources and other resources in the description below and happy hiking.